Rare is the town that celebrates Yankee ingenuity like Farmington, Maine. Oh, the air muffs are on the car. It's Chester Greenwood Day, Farmington's annual tribute to the inventor of the ear muff. You see the originals. The headband they pushes like this, and then it will fold so you can put it in your pocket. Greenwood came up with his revolutionary idea as a teenager in 1873. For the next 60 years, this town in central Maine would be the world capital of warm ears. Our sister station, Portland's WMTW, visited recently. Living away, when I tell people I'm from Farmington, Maine, and they say, where's that? I said, you know, where earmuffs are from. <laughs> True fact. Many of the old Yankee inventions have yet to be improved on. Case in point, that tried and true apple pear still sold at the Vermont Country Store, a contraption that has inspired such devotion. There's even an apple pear museum online. Here, one finds hundreds of variations of this industrial age gadget. Sound a little screwy? Not to Jared Silbershire. This one is quite gizmonic. It's quite rare too. Uh, it's not as as rare as that one, but it's it's nuts. Silbershire is a serious collector. His living room testifies to that. And yes, he did say the word gizmotic. I think it's subjective, but to me, it's geariness. It's it's all the silliness. Almost a, a burdensome amount of complexity. Silbershire owns one of the largest collections of these rare, complex gizmos. This is a rare apple slicer called the Monroe. Unfortunately, this is the only one known. His dining room table, where many an apple has come to a gruesome end. This is going to make a mess. Hacked, scalped, guillotined, and otherwise disemboweled by a swarm of these diabolically efficient devices. There's really no other part of the kitchen is, is as sexy as this. Look, like snake skin. There. Could have been a cobra. Along with antiques, Silbershire collects accents. Picked it up in a pack and lot in Lemster. I met a guy there. Silbershire is recognized as a major force in the Apple Gizmo underground. Many of his pieces, featured on the Apple Pearl Museum website, run by a fellow aficionado out in Colorado. But where did this mania for apple peeling all begin? Apparently, there was a Johnny Appleseed of apple pearers, David H. Goodall. He took it upon himself to go on a three-week tour across country to spread the name around, the apple pearing and in that. And in that three week period, he actually sold 2,000 dozen apple pears. We've come to Antrim, New Hampshire to learn about native son, David H. Goodall, often credited with the invention of the all-in-one apple peeler. In the 1860s, his company employed hundreds in the old mill buildings that stand to this day in Antrim. The success of his apple peeler propelled Goodall all the way to the governor's mansion in 1888. Neil Brown of the Antrim Historical Society tells us Goodall invented dozens of devices like bean cutters and cherry pitters, but apple pears remained, if you will forgive the term, his core business. He shipped tons of apple pears ar around the world. So many, in fact, they're typically not rare enough to get Jared Silbisher's attention. But he made an exception for a good old item he never knew existed. And I, I'm stunned. A one-of-a-kind good old corn cob stripper appeared at a farm auction in Pennsylvania. Silbisher had to have it. I don't know of another machine that does this. The thrill of new finds never gets old for Silbisher, but it's offset by the realization that those who share his passion for peelers are becoming antiques themselves. The sad part about this hobby is that it is a dying group, and I think a lot of younger kids are just not exposed to things that make noise and make smoke and have grease and whatever else, and they don't want to be bothered. You really have to know a lot to make something like this. You have to be really smart and natively smart to have an ability. In the meantime, I'm happy to celebrate the general workmanship and creativity of these people. 
Wow. And Jared operates a business called the Gentleman Hauler, specializing in estate and property cleanout services, a line of work that feeds directly into his passion for collecting. He got the bug for collecting with old carpentry tools, but once he got his first antique apple peeler slicer core, there was no turning back. When he gets wind of a rare item, he'll drop everything to try and get it. Still to come, Yankee Ingenuity meets Yankee Thrift.